in the heart of the Netherlands, on a river called Lek, amongst the farms and the fields, and a host of postcard pretty historic windmills, is a boat builder that's just about as Dutch as you can get. I'm talking, of course, about Zeelander, a Dutch brand that has taken the nautical world by storm, delivering yachts in the Mediterranean, the United States, even in Australia. But what makes them such a popular choice amongst the more discerning of yacht owners? Well, today I've come to their new state-of-the-art production facility to find out all about them and to take a ride on a New Zealander Z72. Zeelander staff are rightly very proud of this facility. The company was started in 2002 and have grown steadily over the years to the point that in 2017 they built this state-of-the-art shipyard with centralised offices. The offices that house the designers, the engineers, the finance team are a wonderful example of what makes the Netherlands such an attractive place to live and such a very productive country. The ground floor houses a meeting room with a selection of woods, fabrics and finishes, encouraging owners to make their yacht, their yacht, unique to their tastes and something they will feel proud to own. After all, luxury is a very personal thing. The design department on the first floor implements those requests to ensure that the client will get exactly what it is that he's asked for and the engineering department is tasked to make the request achievable for the production team. That's located conveniently close to their offices. The production facility can accommodate three yachts at a time. The yacht we shall be looking at later had just left to be launched, leaving two in construction until the next hull arrives. But just look at the difference between these yachts. This is probably a good moment to tell you that the Zeelander range consists of a Z44, a Z55 and the Z72. In the shipyard today, I saw a nearly finished Z55 and a Z72 that was about 50% into its construction. The Z55 was a great example of what a client can do if he uses Zeelander's showroom. This particular client has chosen a paintwork that's reminiscent of an E-type Jaguar from the 1960s, blending it with a rich varnished woodwork on the exterior, a clear-toned teak deck and a lined oak interior. I have a feeling that the owner is going to be very happy with the results. Seeing the yacht out of the water like this was a wonderful opportunity to appreciate the work that goes into the whole design and those small but important details that are less visible once the vessel is launched. The Volvo IPS drives with factory fitted trim tabs, for example, and the unexpected side garage too that can house a 2.85 Williams tender on the Z55. But as we walked towards the Z72, another feature became very visible. This really is quite a distinguished hull design with a sharp V-shaped entry tapering to just an 11 degree dead rise at the stern where we also find these underwater appendages that are actually chine extensions allowing the hull to track straight while still maintaining a curvature above the waterline while planing. Seeing the Z72 in this stage of construction was a unique opportunity to observe the craftsmanship of Zeelander yachts. What I thought was a piece of wood sparked off a fascinating conversation as I commented on how difficult it is to bend wood in this way. Actually, it turns out that the entire Zeelander design philosophy is based on curves. Certainly not the cheapest way to build a yacht, but undoubtedly extraordinarily beautiful. When a hull curves inwards and slopes downwards, then the stainless steel handrails 
have to be made to follow that exact contour, as does the wooden capping rail. Building a curved hull and a curved superstructure means creating rounded moulds for these parts, so much more time consuming and expensive than building with straight lines, but so much more attractive. To fit the curvature of the superstructure, then the windows have to be curved too, and you can just imagine how difficult that is. But what I was truly astonished at is that even the glass in the portholes is curved to follow the exact contours of the hull. I really wasn't sure what to expect when I came to the shipyard this morning. I did kind of guess that it would be clean and tidy because that's the way that Dutch people do work and cleanliness is so important. In yacht building, I've been to shipyards where there's a coating of dust all over the place and nuts and bolts all over the place. And those little things get everywhere, you know, they get into the filters, they get into the tanks and the dust can even permeate the paintwork on the hull. Cleanliness is important if you're aiming for perfection, and that is what Zeelander are aiming for. They don't want to build more boats than everybody else, but they do want to build better boats than everybody else in their category. We'll be coming back to that later, but first, let's take a look at one of their boats that they made earlier. This is the Zeelander Z72 that has just come out of the shipyard and is being prepared for delivery. Now the shipyard were quite keen to point out that every yacht is quite different, really bespoke from the metallic blue hull to the pearlescent superstructure and from the custom designed seating at the stern to the diving board plates at the bow. Let's take a look through her though. As you can see, the aft deck is a wonderful area for entertaining and for relaxing. Ample and comfortable seating areas on a platform that lifts up hydraulically for access to the engine room. I mentioned earlier that voluptuous curves are a theme throughout the Zeelander design philosophy, and that can be seen here. It would have been so easy to make this bulkhead flat with flat glass, easy, but not as elegant as this subtly shaped window that lifts and lowers to reveal a wonderful and fresh galley, conveniently located at midships to allow the galley to be the central conversation point as you entertain guests in the aft deck or at this beautifully appointed inside dining table. Now the shipyard made a point that this area has been elevated to allow guests a 360 degree panoramic view. I didn't quite understand what they meant until I got on board, but now I've seen it for myself, I understand what a great feature it is, allowing conversation at eye level with somebody standing at the side of the table, uninterrupted by the helm station seats. And talking of helm station seats, just take a look at what a practical feature this is. The helm station itself is simple and clean, Three equally sized Garmin screens display everything you will ever need while underway, and just a few buttons adorn the dashboard, one of which activates the privacy function in the side windows in case you venture upstairs from your cabin one morning in a state of undress. The cabins too are everything you would hope for in a yacht of this pedigree. A master stateroom forward with a well-proportioned bathroom and closet space, and two mirror VIP staterooms aft, with their own bathrooms and closets too. Let's talk for a moment about the performance of this yacht though. Three 1350 Volvo IPS drives propel the yacht to speeds in excess of 40 knots, and I have to say that the level of silence on board, even at that speed, is quite exceptional. This was always a fundamental requirement of the designers. High speed, yes, but not at the expense of comfort. The shipyard wants to create a yacht that is notable for its low sound levels, priding themselves on the fact that you really can't tell if the generator is switched on while at anchor, and they even developed a clever although not inexpensive way of ensuring that the noise of water slapping against the hull chines 
is imperceptible. I tell you what they've done, but I'm sworn to secrecy. The range of the Z72 is about 680 nautical miles, and you won't be surprised to hear that she has a Seakeeper gyroscopic stabilizer. We really weren't able to put them to the test during our sea trial, since it was actually a river trial, but we were certainly able to try out her top speed and handling abilities. When I was doing the research for this video, there was one car brand that was often referenced, and that is Rolls-Royce. Now, from time to time, I do get comments from YouTube viewers who say, I could buy this yacht that's so much bigger and that yacht that's so much bigger for the same price of the yacht that you're showing me now. And that's true, of course. This is by no stretch of the imagination a cheap boat. In the same way, you can buy probably 20 or 30 transit vans for the same price as a Rolls Royce. You can get more people in them, they're bigger, and it's an easier purchase to justify with your wife too. You can get several S-Class Mercedes for the price of a roller, but they don't offer the same bespoke, tailor-made level of quality. You can have a yacht that has straight windows, that has cleats that cost one-tenth of the price of the cleats on this yacht, that has gel coat instead of metallic paint, that has light fittings from Home Depot, and there is nothing wrong with that. It's just that that is not the market that Zealander is seeking to satisfy, and their incredible sales record indicates that this is appreciated by many yacht owners. Yacht owners who would rather have a Rolex than a Timex, that would rather have a Rolls Royce than a Cadillac, that would rather have a Zealander than a yacht built by many other builders who appeal to a bigger section of the market. Try, if you can, asking another yacht builder to give you headliners with Rolls Royce style star lighting at the top. Most yacht builders will refuse to do that. Why? Because it slows down their production team. Zealander, on the other hand, revel in that kind of request. They relish the opportunity to show their clients what they can produce. I asked at the beginning of this video what makes them such a popular choice. Now, I think I know the answer to that.